Welcome to Robins TV Extra Time. We're still basking in the glory of City, pounding the Pilgrims 4-0. The dam finally bursting, the goals flowing. City legend Lewis Carey is alongside me here. Now, that was better, wasn't it? That was better. It was very much um, so with regards to the return of in goals, but I think we said recently there's been many really good performances. Um, however, there hasn't been the goals or the results as in points wise to, to back it up. And I think today was, um, or yesterday, whatever, was a perfect example of um, you finish off your chances, you see how teams can capitulate at this level. Capitulate is a good word as well. Um, now, sometimes stats don't really tell you the story of a game. For Saturdays, they certainly do. Quite extraordinary, these statistics. I mean, just look at the expected goals for Plymouth. 0.14. 66% possession. It felt like more than that as well. 25 shots. Incredible. I think there's lots to look from the stats. So, you know, at some point, City were up at 72% possession. That last little bit of possession for uh, Plymouth at the end of the game to see it out would have raised that. So it was a lot higher. It was the shots on target, which is... Um, which is very good return, 12 to 2. Total shots, 25. If you can get up in a 20, 25 mark any game, you've got a chance to win it. But the other part, just looking at this, is like the duels won. I think when you see that City are nearly double the duels to Plymouth, bearing in mind Plymouth didn't have the ball, I think that shows you um, possibly where the game was won and lost it. Uh, Plymouth did not lay a glove on Bristol City all, all game. However, the... Um, the possession has to then turn into something and to create 3.19 expected goals and score four is excellent. So There's nothing worse than having loads of possession but not winning the game, is there? But there was never really in doubt at Ashton Gate. No, I thought the, the way they kept the ball in the first half was very good. They controlled the game. Um, it was just how could we create a clear-cut opportunity? Um, and in the second half, they did that. They, it then puts the uh, opposition on the back foot and with the history they've got over the last sort of 18 months, there's only one way it's going to go once you've scored one against Plymouth. Now, obviously, it, it was goalless at half-time, but you were still keen to pick out a, cu a couple of moments in that first half. And the way we were attacking, particularly with players on, on the sort of edge of the box as well, it was, it, was a, it was a nearly thing in the first half, but there were some elements of the play that you, you appreciated. There, there was some really good play. Um, the, the, the amount of times we changed the sides, got the ball into these dangerous areas. And then if you, if you look, we kept hitting the players rather than um, looking to pick a player at times. And when you play against an opposition that all go back and defend their goal, if you get your eyes up, you should see there's three players on the edge of the box. In these sort of situations like there, they all go back, the Plymouth players, to defend the goal. And Twine just does what all good players do, is just stand still, let the movement go defend the goal. You stand still on the penalty spot, and it um, creates a free opportunity for you. And again here, stand still, free player edge of the box when they defend their goal. And it was just how, how can you make those situations that you uh, find yourself arriving in, how can you turn them into chances? And to turn them into chances, you just need that little bit of cleverness of eyes up see teammates, uh, better decision making and there's goals there for you. Yeah, and there's wave after wave of uh, attacks in that, in that first half as well. Um, it was interesting as well to see that Zach Viner appeared to be playing as if you're like an old-fashioned right back rather than in a back three. He was forward all the time. It was really good to see. So to start with, you would say that with Plymouth just pressing with one nine, it allowed two centre-backs and you didn't need any more players. So it meant the, the full-backs could push on in Zach. Um, Today, he ends up being a beneficiary from that, so he ends up having a couple of shots at goal, which is really nice. But if you look at the space that he arrives in now at the top of the screen on the right-hand side, there's loads of space running off the back of people that are ball-watching that allows him to arrive in these areas and have strikes. But um, it was a really good performance from both four-backs, but the, the setup against Plymouth, so really good from a tactical and coaching perspective from, from Liam and the team to understand that you build 2v1, and then your fullbacks create your um, your overload. So that's where they had a lot of ball in the first half. And having having Zach at right back meant that you could get even further forward as well up that wing. Yeah, and with people like you and Mometi getting for forward, they're the ball carriers. They're the people that put defenders on the back foot, create chances or win penalties, free kicks, and so on. So um, yeah, it, it's perfect what you just said. That it allows the creative players to be. Um, nearer the opposition goal. It's, it's strange as well when you think you win 4-0 and you play really well. But I think it is important also to, to pick out 
the defenders and how well they played, they just shut the door constantly. And you were keen to, to mention Luke McNally, who was outstanding, as he has been really since, since joining the club. I, I've been really impressed with Luke, um, you know, since the time he's come in. I think he's he's really good in aerial duels. Anytime teams tick kick the ball long, sorry, he you know he's very comfortable at bringing it to the floor. He can um, he can build in possession like what Liam wants his centre backs to do on the left hand side. Not always easy with a right footer on the left hand side, but he's really comfortable to help build um, and support the play. He's comfortable playing into midfield, and then he's aggressive when it comes to blocking, heading, and making tackles. Yeah, because when he when he came in, um, you, you wondered how he was going to fit in because we were you know in terms of centre backs we, that's a strong part of our game but he and, and, and Dickie and, and Viner I mean they just slot it they play together so well don't they it's such a strong part of our of our play yeah I think with them moving into a back three recently they've built this relationship between them um, so today even if they move to a four and Zach plays on the right hand side is um his overall sort of athleticism um, and game intelligence allows him to play as a right back, where he's, he's comfortable out there as, as, as much so as he is as a centre back. Um, but I think the consistency comes from playing together over the last sort of three, four, five games. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at then some of the uh, the best moments from uh, the, the game at the weekend. And I mean, they didn't attack that often, Plymouth, but every time they did, the door was slammed shut in their face. It was exactly that. So Bristol City did the opposite to um, to Plymouth. So any time a ball goes wide or into a front man's feet, the centre-backs read, uh, read the ball well, got their body between man and ball, uh, man, ball and goal. So it meant there was no room and it was just stepping in like this. It was really impressive. So any time a ball went into forward's feet, the Plymouth forward's feet, Dickey and McNally both stepped in, read the play, read the situation, and then could start start attacks again with their, um, you know, with their quality of passing. Yeah. Ultimately, of course, though, the goal was about the game is about goals, isn't it? And we saw a, a flurry of them in the second half. It was Twine who, who got the ball rolling. Mametti, of course, involved. And bear in mind, Twine had hit the bar and come close with a couple of others, but he did get the goal in the end. And, and after that, really, there was no chance of a comeback. I don't think. Yeah, you know, we were saying in the in the studio here, the start of the second half was really good. They stressed the opposition with forward runs, putting the ball in the box, deep runs running in behind, but the play was more vertical. First half, it was a little bit more side to side. It was more vertical first um, second half. And this was an example after we had hit the crossbar, we'd had a chance from a set play. Um, and at some point, you just felt like that um, Plymouth defence were going to do exactly what they do here and then drop off, drop off, drop off and then even defenders dropping on the line as you see that plays twine on side but it's a brilliant little shift and shoot here from Moretti nice little stud roll, drop of the shoulder, shift and shoot opens up the chance, opens up the goal um, always taught aren't we show them wide why they allow the right footer to come back inside I don't know and why um, why the defender drops on the line to play everybody on the side we don't know however Bristol City have to take advantage of those situations that's what they did then very well they've had so many heavy away defeats Plymouth it tends to be if they concede one then suddenly they can see two three four five even six and uh, that was the case again at Ashton Gate Mametti they couldn't deal with him a lovely curling finish the defending though not great <laughs> it, is, it is an excellent finish he, he was outstanding all day but you could see you could see when a team have gone emotionally gone and physically gone and togetherness gone you can see it the goalkeepers having to go at the centre backs because you watch when the ball comes in everybody drops so they make the decision for you now Mametti has to have the quality and the awareness to see that the gap has opened up and that's what he's done so a little shift outside of his foot here come around the outside of the ball to bring it back in from the outside of the post but he uses the defender to block the goalkeeper and play around him giving the goalkeeper no chance of saving it but that it's was, an excellent finish that was a terrific finish and the next one was unsavable as well a little bit higher um, when at this point Plymouth were just a, well, they were a rabble by this point. They were. You see how stretched they are and how much walking and jogging there is from them. But again, brilliant pass from Hirakawa, excellent touch from Earthy, and then Naki Wells keeps the speed of the attack. Now, what that does is it puts defenders on the back foot, and again, you'll watch the defender, he stops and he steps back. What Mometi does is touches it on his left foot, little drop of the shoulder to keep the defender. Um, move in the opposite way and then cuts back inside and knows what he's going to do and I think whenever you're in those sort of central areas if you can get the ball high up towards the goalkeeper's shoulder um, as an area that they can never get their hands up to save it <coughs> sorry but again 
brilliant little touch, shift shoot, knows exactly what he wants to do, lifts it high and is a beautiful finish. Six goals, not a bad return, is it, for a wide man? I think he's an excellent return. Um, if he can get to double figures by the end of the season, um, along with a striker and another player, then there's um, there's no reason why, as a team, you can't be up near the, the you know at least the playoffs. But he's got that ability to do that. You know, we spoke about him on Tuesday night after the Watford game about his, the volume of times he finds himself in those sort of sort of areas of the pitch and how we can get more goals from him. And today he had loads of confidence and um, you know struck the ball really well. But strikers ultimately live on goals and it was great to see Sinclair Armstrong get one right at the very end. Yeah, and I think the, the, the move beforehand and the keeping the possession just runs the legs into the ground and it drains you and you, you could see at that point that Plymouth had gone. Um, you know, there was the lack of, I shouldn't say lack of effort, but there was a lack of um, movement towards the ball, a lot more walking and then a chance for Armstrong to come off the bench. And like we said the other night, the boys didn't come off the bench and um, show what they're worth, whereas he's had the opportunity today to have match practice um, of shots at goal. And I think you can, you can do the finishing all day in training, but to get it in match situations is most beneficial. So City took advantage of being 3-0 up, could make a lot of changes with Sam Bell and Armstrong, which gave him the opportunity to um, you know, finish as a nine should in that situation. And that, that'll only um, build his confidence moving forward. Another struggling club next weekend, Portsmouth away, be a great atmosphere there, but well, surely we're going to go there absolutely full of confidence, you'd say. I think full of confidence, there's no reason why not uh, the pressure's on Portsmouth to come out and try and play, and at the moment, City, any time they've played away from home and teams haven't sat in, they've caught them on the counter-attack really well, so they'll be, they'll be super confident after today, have a good week's training and hopefully, um, hopefully another good result next weekend. Great to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a fantastic day for City um, against Wayne Rooney, uh, at the moment at least, Wayne Rooney's Plymouth. Right, make sure you're across our coverage of the game at Portsmouth next weekend. But uh, you'll enjoy your week looking back at that fantastic victory for City. 4-0. Have a great week. See you again soon. Bye-bye.